What's up, guys? We are back. Fitness Profit Multiplier, Anthony and Jimmy. Today, we're going to be discussing the number one reason why gyms start failing. And I'm going to get right into it today. The reason why most gyms end up failing is because they, the person who's in charge, the owner, they offload sales too quickly. Remember, guys, no one is going to sell your program the way you can sell it. No one has the passion for your program, your gym, your location, your community, the same way you do. As soon as you offload sales, you're going to offload that to an employee who, yes, they care about your facility, but they don't care about it the same way you do. You know what you put into your gym on an everyday basis, the blood, sweat, and tears it took to build your location. Your employee is just an employee. They just they get a paycheck. They go home. They don't think about it. But it's on your mind 24-7. So the reason why most gyms fail is they prematurely pass this role on. And now I'm going to just pivot this to Jimmy here who <laughs> opened up his second location now and he is the head salesperson in that second location right now. So yeah. now again, guys, Jimmy didn't just, okay, I'm, I'm not going to do sales in my first location anymore. I'm going to go to my second location and start selling there. That's not what he did. Jimmy was removed from his sales seat in that first location for, I want to say about a year. I could be wrong. You could correct me there. But yeah. probably about a year of being removed from that position before he even thought about opening up a second location. So this is why gyms fail is because they pass off the sales role way too early. So, Jimmy, let's talk about it. You're in the thick of it right now. So we could, uh, you know, bounce all this off where you are. So let's go. I am in the thick of it right now. So um, the, the thing that you deal with in – handing off sales. And, and we believe here at Fitness Profit Multiplier, sales is the last thing you want to be offloading in your business, right? As the owner, you want to hold on to that role as long as you can. One, so you're not paying like commissions on those sales, but two, because it is going to be the lifeblood of growing your business over time and getting it to a point where you're kicking off massive profits, right? And it's, it's honestly one of the most valuable skills in your business besides vision, marketing, the things that kind of come above that sales is probably one of the most important roles in your business to get it to continue to grow. Like we're all small businesses. We don't have huge teams. It's not a big thing. Right? So when we look at small group, personal training and, and bootcamp gyms and things like this, sales is a big priority. And the thing that most gym owners do that destroys their profit and destroys their business is they hand off the sales role too early, like Anthony was saying. And they hand it off to somebody that they don't know how to train them. They don't train that salesperson up to be a good salesperson. They know how to sell, but they don't know how to train that salesperson, which is why that's something we're so passionate about here is how do you train that salesperson up to get to where they need to go. My sales associate at my first facility got to a point where she was closing her best month. She closed 38 new clients in one month. And this is high ticket guys. This isn't boot camp stuff. Our tickets are $500 a month. Okay. 38 new clients in one month. I knew at that point I was completely removed from that business because I did not need to be in there anymore. But that didn't happen overnight, right? And I'm in the thick of it now because I have not trained up another salesperson enough to get to the point where they can do what I can do or what my sales manager can do at the other facility. So in that, if you don't train your salesperson up well and you don't have a system around training them up and you just go, well, I just do it. I just sell them. I don't have a system. I don't have a process your gym will start to fail once you hand that off. If you're not tracking your own numbers, you're not tracking your conversion percentages, you don't have expectations for them, you don't hold them to different standards, and you don't have a system or a process in place for training them, you're doomed. You cannot scale and you cannot get out of that role. You will always be in the sales role forever. Now, staying in the sales role longer is the thing that you should be doing, but eventually you wanna be completely removed from your business so you're actually an owner. The only way to do that is what we just talked about, proper training and proper expectations for that individual. 
Yeah, setting up a sales system. And the sales system is very, very important because it's the key to scaling your gym. It's the key to freedom is that system specifically, the sales system. Now, even if you have a really good sales system and a really good salesperson, when you pass off the sales role from yourself to somebody else, you're automatically going to see a drop off. If you're tracking your numbers correctly, and this is what we teach all of our clients, if you're tracking your numbers correctly, you will see a drop off even initially when you give the sales to somebody else. Because again, like I said, when, when I talk to a prospect, when Jimmy talks to a prospect, it's very, very different than when Sally or John speaks to a prospect because there's just a difference in the tone in which we're speaking because we know that Mrs. Jones, if she walks into our gym, she's going to get the results that she wants. We know it because we created it. We believe it. The salesperson, even though they're a good salesperson, still might not believe it. They may have self, uh, you know, doubts in their mind about like, is this program, is it, can it really do that? Is this person really going to follow through? Like they might think of those things. Whereas when you do something, that passion just comes through and people see it and they, you know, they, they believe it. And you, because you're the owner, you carry yourself very, very differently too. You know, you're a little more poised. You have like um, a certain demeanor about you because you're the boss, like a certain cockiness that kind of comes with that. But people want to be around that type of a person sometimes, especially when it comes to selling, they want that authority figure. So you're automatically going to get a little bit of a drop off initially. But you want, like Jimmy said, I think that that's the good telltale sign. When your salesperson can bypass what you've done in sales more than you for three consecutive months, you're ready to pass that off. Mm -hmm. So my salesperson as well was able to outperform what I've ever was able to do. So, and that was how, why I was able to pass that off as well. Yeah. And you just have to have that confidence in that individual and you're going to see a drop off. You're going to see a time in which they have to do the reps and fail because they're going, you have to be comfortable with that. So you need to be to a point where your revenue is high enough and you've done a backfill of the sales enough that you can handle getting objections, not closing people like these kinds of things that are coming up. This is why my second facility, I don't have somebody yet that I can bring in there because my sales manager is still at my first facility. So I have to be the person in the second facility to get it up and running because every sale is important. Once you get to a point where your revenue is high enough, you've closed a lot of deals before handing this off, you have to have a bit of a barrier. You have to have this additional revenue on top to kind of have a cushion right? This cushion against the lack of conversions that are going to happen when that first and first goes into that role and gets those reps. Because by the time you're a gym owner, you've likely been a personal trainer at a big box gym. You've likely been through some sales. You've had to do the sales in the beginning. And if you're on this call and you're like, well, I don't like sales. I'm not good at it. This and that, that is the one major skill you have to acquire first, then train your people up on how to do it. If you don't have any other skills, you don't even have to be a skilled trainer, but you have to be to own a gym, but you have to be a skilled salesman. That's where the skill comes in. That's where you're going to make your money. If you're a skilled salesman, but you're not a skilled trainer, that's fine because you can hire out that training skill much more easily than you can hire out the sales skill. So that all being said, if you are wanting to get out of that sales role in your business and you don't want your gym to fail, sell like crazy. Then while you're selling like crazy, train your next protege up under you and then hand the sales off to them and know that the volume of conversions is going to go down over the next month or two. If they're game for it and they're good, they get about a quarter of that. And then the next quarter, it'll start to climb up and they'll get better. If they're not getting better after that quarter, maybe they're not the fit for the role and you got to find somebody else. Yeah. Agreed, man. Agreed guys. And this is what we do. We help personal trainers improve and scale 
this sales system. So if you guys want help in any of that, just click the links below and you can book your call with us and we can look at your sales system and figure out exactly what you need to do in order to scale that, that and get yourself to, like Jimmy said, 30, 38 high ticket closes every month. That's the goal guys. And until next time, Anthony and Jimmy, Fitness Profit Multiplier, we are out.